well, it's a beautiful, typical day on the Gold Coast. And uh, in the background, uh, you can see the skyline of uh, Surface Paradise. For a number of years now, I've been really focusing on places like the Gold Coast. Let's call it an example of conventional mass resort tourism. There's a consensus among a lot of stakeholders, academically as well as in the industry, that the Gold Coast currently is in a situation of maturity and that we need to take some proactive steps to ensure that it's more sustainable in the long term. What I'm focusing on specifically right now is a concept called uh, enlightened mass tourism. I define that as a combination of the best of mass tourism and alternative tourism, which would be things like economies of scale in the case of uh, mass tourism as well as the energy that comes from competition and the innovation that it spans, and on the other hand, putting in the best elements of alternative tourism. And that would include things like ethics. More attention to environmental and socio-cultural sustainability is also important. When we think of places like the Gold Coast, we have to think of it as a functional region. It's not just the beaches and the high-rises that we see here, but it's also the mountains that are in the distance. A number of national parks encompassing some of the most important subtropical rainforests in Australia are experiencing increasing levels of visitation. We have to think about how tourists typically spend a bit of time on the Gold Coast. And then they also spend some time up in Lamington or Springbrook National Parks visiting the rainforests. So what's the functional relationship there? Indeed, we have to think about this area as a functional region, which combines the mass tourism of the, the beaches and uh, the strip, and also the alternative tourism. And that's where the idea of enlightened mass tourism comes in. Gold Coast is under a lot of pressure uh, for rejuvenation. There's talk about a cruise ship terminal at the spit, and there's renewed talk about a cableway to take people up into the hinterland. So it's a huge challenge, but I think that the lessons that can be learned here could be applied to other places in Australia's pleasure periphery. Places like Cairns, the Sunshine Coast, and even smaller communities like Broome, Coffs Harbour and Byron Bay. We're already a leader internationally in this field of um, looking at sustainable tourism and I think a lot of these lessons could uh, also have resonance in uh, other parts of the world that have a similar kind of uh, resource base.